Now, South African-based distribution services and trading business, Bidvest, is the largest food and services business outside of North America. The group has a market cap of 58 billion rand. It's an active in the services, including freight management, outsource services, and automotive retailing. Bidvest has a price-to-earnings ratio of 13.8. Uh, Ian, welcome to the show this Thank evening. You. Uh, looking at Bidvest's uh, results uh, for the year to June, of course, uh, we, you know, we're further down the line from that. But let's no. start with Bidvest South Africa because a revenue there, 59 billion rand, it was up by 14% or so. They turned that into a trading profit of 3.4 billion rand and very much geared towards the automotive side. Earnings there coming through, trading aside and freight business coming through overall. How's that part of the business doing? Well, I think look at the bit, a little bit further than that. Wherever one looks in this business, one strikes this, I can only call it charismatic management, leadership. Brian Joffe is a modern phenomenon. He's a company doctor who, who doesn't let his patient get sick. And I think that the, the finger on the pulse of every facet of the, of the industry is really vitally important. And they've managed to stick to vitally important uh, sectors of the economy on a continual basis. I'm going to challenge you on that one because okay. what about the food services side well. and of course the exposure to Europe right now? I mean some of the businesses there, uh, seafood holdings in the UK, they've got businesses in Belgium, they've got businesses in the Czech Republic and looking at the earnings there, Bidvest uh, food services for Europe down 2.2% yes. for the year to June and their operating profit was down by 20%. You wonder what the earnings are doing now that were what more than six months past that date. With the economy shrinking in the UK. Exactly. Admit it. There's nothing that management can do about that. Could they have exited it? Well, why did they not agree to sell the food service part of the company when they had the opportunity? Because they take a far-sighted view. And I think this may be the case here too. And I'd say that if, they, if there wasn't a buyer for a particular sector, it was because they wanted to keep it because it whole, the whole, every piece fitted into this bigger mesh. And so I'll accept your challenge and say, look ahead. Okay, so that, that's, uh, that's your view, Ian. Your view, Eugene, on the fact that we've got uh, a business right now that is very much geared towards many sectors of the economy. And of course, that European uh, element is uh, putting them under pressure. But overall, your views on Barlow World right now? Um, but this, you mean Barlow World. But this. <laughs> <laughs> it is a fantastic company. It's highly diversified. And when you use the word diversified, uh, you're going to get times where some businesses do exceptionally well and others do okay, and some do less well. Um, I think you've got an exceptional management team, and uh, it's a business that works very well. The European side is a bit worrying, but remember that's now. Five years down the line, uh, you're going to look back and say, guys, it was a really tough time, but uh, the effect is, the diversification effect is coming through and the earnings will come through. So uh, um, they're very aggressive in their management style. If something doesn't work, they'll cut it out very quickly. Um, so one's got to be patient. With uh, so, that, so apart from the fact that you've got Brian Joffe as, as the head there, and as you both are very bullish on management, and many people are because of that element, but what is it about Bidvest in terms of the companies they own, the exposure they have in terms of uh, businesses right now that you like the most? Eugene. I, I think it's, it's the, the broad service. It's actually a GDP play. Bitvest is a, is a really good GDP play, um, and it feeds through the chain continuously. So it's not just, just Brian Joffe that drives this thing. He's, he's a very charismatic leader, but they've got really good depth, and they've anchored themselves in a very broad footprint um, uh, in, a, in a business sense, which allow them as, as GDP um, uh, accelerate uh, that will earnings will do so as well although uh, from an earnings perspective it's not too volatile so it's a really nice type of company to own in the sense that you um, do get the kicker when things really goes well but it's diversified enough to um, give you reasonably stable earnings um, when it's needed Barclays Capital says the company is trading at a 14% discount to a value that they see it going to, given the fact that it's got a strong cash flow. And you wonder what it's going to do with this cash and why it's sitting on this cash. Overall, though, the stock is sitting at 81 Rand, 32 today. Would you be buying it, hot or not? 
um, I would, would I be buying anything right now? And I'm sorry I have to put that qualification. And the answer is, no, I think we're in a wait and see period. But if I didn't have some, I would say it's one that's got to be on the shopping list and one should be continually adding to it because over time it's going to be a, an essential must have. At 81 Rand though, is it a, is it a buy? Considering how far it's come down, uh, I'd say that it's a probably a fair buy. It's not okay. wildly exciting. Mildly hot, warm. Yeah, okay, warm, put it that way. Eugene, where and do you stand on the stock, hot or not? Not, no, it's expensive. It's. Um, it's not a cheap stock. People has been paying up for um, for growth there. Uh, I, I I would say it's not hot. 